Hi everybody, welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. I'm Tina. Today, our fall blog hop is obviously fall themed. And during the fall, I love the color, the changes of the leaves. Um, coming from Las Vegas and moving to Washington, getting to see the nice seasonal changes is very nice. On this one, I picked a leaf and I did some gilding foil on it. Now there's several different types of foil you can use. This leaf right here comes in the new holiday catalog and it comes from Falling for Leaves. It comes with a matching die set. Love these really intricate dies and of course the big fall leaves got some wonderful borders today we're using this one this little three leaf and i have done some other leaves with this foil technique here's the large leaf and then i actually did a large leaf with the foil and then used the intricate die to cut it out. Um, this one I used a little bit more silver foils on it. And then you can even take your little ones. I think these show better on the white here. And these other two leaves come from the new Rooted in Nature set. And it actually comes with an embosser so once you cut your leaf, you can run it back through your machine with this embossing die. And it gives you your imprints there. On the one I did today, if you don't have that set, I simply took a stylus after it was foiled. I don't know if you can see it. It's but I drew with the stylus. I'll show you to give it just a little bit of texture and detail. So let's get started and I'll show you the different types of foils. Now, on this post I will also put a PDF. I've created a, a list of the different ways you can do this foiling technique. Like most techniques, you can achieve the same thing several different ways. The one we're going to do today is technique one, where we're going to be using double-sided tape on our image. You can also do heat embossed on paper. And this technique, basically, you heat emboss your image. You stamp your image, Versamark and then use clear embossing powder, fine clear embossing powder, emboss it, heat emboss it, and then you are going to lay your foil on it and run it through a laminate machine. Um, there's hundreds of different laminate machines out there. I actually have an inexpensive, under $20, got it at Walmart machine and it works perfect. You can also do hot melt adhesive. That is Stampin' Up! used to have, uh, it was called heat and stick. And you used it like embossing powder. You put your verse mark on, put the heat and stick, and then you apply your foil on top of that because it'll be tacky as soon as you heat it. If you have that, you can still use that. You can also use toner paper. This is uh, this one I couldn't do because you have to use a laser printer in order for this technique to work. You die cut your image. Um, after you run it through the printer, you have to run it through your laser printer, whatever image it is that you want to use. And the toner of your ink will work as an adhesive because then you'll lay your foil over it and then you run it through your um, laminate machine. 
You can also use embossing paste. Stampin' Up! has embossing paste. And on that one, you simply take your embossing paste, your whatever sheet you want to use. You can use different colors, whatever. I would suggest using, though, a, a embossing paste or embossing gel that is glossy. Um, you don't want your foil to lose its shine. So you would do your embossing paste on your stencil, heat it just a little bit to, to start the drying process, but you want it to still be tacky when you add the foil. When we do this first technique, this will all make very good sense to you. And there's other adhesives out there. I will list them on here. Um, Decofoil makes adhesives that you can use. Um, Decofoil is a brand of foil sheet. And you can get these at the craft store. It's made by iCraft. And these are the actual sheets of foil. So you would do your image, lay your sheet over the tacky part of your image, and then burnish it with a, a um, bone folder or something, credit card, and then peel it off. And this is an easy way, but today we are going to use gilding foil. And you can buy gilding foil where it's, and you have to be careful, this stuff is really fine and it flies. You can kind of see it flying just breathing on it. You can buy it pre-shredded like this, but I buy the ready-made sheets. You can get, as you see, this stuff flies everywhere. You can get several colors. You can get gold, silver, uh, combined. Um, this one's kind of a red variegated leaf that I added. So what I did is I bought the packages which has six sheets in it, and that's going to go a long way. And I just mix the different colors into my little Tupperware. And these come out looking, oops, where's my little foil sheet here? Oh, I don't have it in there. Oh, here it is. Sorry, you guys. These will come in real fine little sheets. And what you do, I'll just show you here really quick. So you see, it's really super fine. You're just going to cut it up or break it up. I have a little pile here because that I've been making uh, this card for a card swap we're doing. So, of course, I have to make 11 of them. So I have a little pile there. I would suggest no ceiling fans on and definitely don't sneeze as you see this stuff sticks. I'm thinking it'll be a really make a really pretty nail design. Put it on there and put clear coat on. Mm. There's another tutorial to come. Okay, so we're going to start on this today. Let me move everything out of the way here. On this card, we did our leaf. We're going to do that. The little squares that I did here, if you look closely, hopefully I can get it to show up on camera, I embossed these tiny little squares. Stampin' Up! has this really nice embossing folder that's called Subtle. Let me see if I can show it on the camera here a little bit. But I like using it, especially on card fronts or just little details, because it makes your paper look like linen paper. And... I really enjoy it. So it added a little technique. Around the edges here, I like using stitched edges. I think it just adds a nice touch. And to get those stitched edges, in the stitched labels die set, it comes with two different types of stitched edges that you can do on the edge of your cardstock. One's just a straight stitching like we used here, and one has a little crisscross pattern. Um, I use this all the time. 
I'm waiting for Stampin' Up! to come up with um, the regular stitched rectangles soon, all, all different sizes. That would be nice. So that's where we have there. This is just the little lines you see here. I just um, used my Stampin' Trimmer embosser, just emboss, uh, or, you know, did a little embossed lines just to add some character to it. And of course we have some copper embossing powder here. So on this first technique, or on this first leaf, what I do, and you can do this with any double-sided tape, it will work. But since I was doing so many and I needed a larger surface, I use a tape called Suquang. I assume that's how it's pronounced. And it comes in all different widths. But if you only have your double-sided tear and tape, that works too. You can also just take a piece of tear and tape on your any card you're making, put a piece of tear and tape, rub your foil on there, and you're going to have a foil design on your card. So let's start there. So we're going to take our Suquang. And this is two inch width, um, double sided, and it's very, very sticky, this Suquang. Um, I use it a lot because I do a lot of uh, glitter painting and things like that that you can use double sided tape with. Lay it on your sheet. And I'm going to pause this a second or just because I think I forgot to cut out a leaf I don't see it here so let me run over to the big shot cut this out apologize prepared for that now was I so here's our die cut so you can get several more on that so we take it off here and then we're gonna bring in our gilding foil or deco foil um, suppose you can call it either or I think there's a little bit of difference because the deco foil is actually a foil sheet and you can actually even do this on fabrics or anything else this way the way we're doing it today is a quick easy way to get a really nice effect you see I've got the deco foil all over me already. gilding foil so we're going to peel off, and that will bring our adhesive out. I have my little pile here. You can do it right in your Tupperware piece, but the reason I don't do that is if the more you mess in a large pile of it, this stuff flies everywhere. So we're just going to dip it into our leaves here, or our foil, and press it down. And then you're going to rub it in. And that's just going to make sure it sticks to your adhesive area. I just used my nail, and you can this way scrape off the little bit of extra. move some of this out of the way here and I found I just use a small wedge of sponge seems to work pretty well you can also use a uh, fairly stiff bristled paintbrush but with the sponge you're just gonna buff it and you see it'll take off any extra
I like mixing the different colors. You could do any solid color if you wanted, either golds or platinums or whatever foils you have. I kind of like the effect of the coppers and the reds and the golds and the silver all together. Plus, it helps with a, whatever format of your card you have. You have a, a lot of options for colors when you mix up the colors. So then we have our little leaf. We have a few little tiny, just hit the edges like you're sponging the edge of a card. And it'll brush off the little pieces. Okay, and I'm going to move this aside so we don't end up with it everywhere. And there we have it. We have our little leaf. To give it a little accent, I just took a piece of foam mat and my stylus tool and just kind of scored some leaf lines. You don't have to do this, but it just adds a little bit to it. Oops, I didn't do a very straight line there, did I? And we have our leaf. So we're going to set that aside. And then on the front, I offset my thankful. And this is where your stamparatus comes in wonderfully. Because I've set up this... Boy, that light's really going to play havoc on this, isn't it? I've set up both my front greeting... And the inside of my card because I'm copper embossing these so when you're doing multiple cards for a card swap you can set up one panel with your inside I think I'm gonna have to turn this one light off it's killing you here so you can set up one panel with your inside greetings and your other panel with the we're going to take, put our front panel in. Don't forget your embossing, buddy. We're going to use this to get rid of the static so that when you're embossing, it doesn't stick where you don't want it to. Turned off that one light. Hopefully that helped the glare, you, you guys. I'm still using a webcam, so I still have to figure out my lighting here soon. I haven't done many videos, but... Just want to stamp our thankful. Oops, where's my magnet? That's the other good reason. You see, it didn't had my magnet too close, and the work didn't fully stamp. So when stamp positioning tools came out, oh, it saved me so many times. I misstamped or got all the way to the end end of a card, and just wasn't quite stamped correctly. There we go. A lot of times when I'm embossing, I just take a sheet of paper that I've folded. just makes it easy to get the embossing powder back into the jar. So this is the copper embossing powder. I thought I was in love with gold until copper came out. And this is where your little paper comes in handy. Just tip it in. And always remember to put the lid back on your embossing powder before you turn on your heat gun. 
I learned that the hard way when I hit my uh, package of embossing powder with the heat gun and it went everywhere. So let's see if my heat gun will reach over here. And pardon the noise, we're going to heat this up. I always heat up my gun just a little bit before I start. It helps keep your paper from warping. So heat a little bit, go to the back side, heat it a little. And when the gun's heated up, it'll emboss much faster, so it took it right away. Not pretty. Just love the copper. So we've got our front. And then I've already run my scrap piece of paper through the embossing folder as soon as I find it. Okay, I know I did. Now I just need to find it. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me move our embossing away. Let me find what I did with it here. So I just ran a full sheet or a four and a four by five and a quarter sheet of vanilla. We're using very vanilla through the subtle embossing folder. See how the full sheet, it just gives it that linen technique or that linen look. Just looks elegant. And to get the little squares, you can use your uh, layering squares. You just use the smallest square, um, which is a, a one inch square. Um, but I have actually a one inch punch, so we're going to use that to save time. Either or, it'll work. We're going to cut out four of these. I did a full sheet because, like I said, I was doing 11 of these cards, so it just was easier. So we've got our squares. And then we're just going to take... Oop, and we have a runner. Took off. We're going to take... I like to use dimensionals. A dimensional on each one. Now you can measure this if you would like to, to mark the center of your card. I already know that this is four inch by five and a quarter and I'm offsetting lengthwise and then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it to center it in the middle. So I'm just going to lightly set these here because I, I want it just a little ways up from the thankful. I'll get my second one before I push it down. And I'm kind of just eyeballing the sides here. Oops. And I want just a little bit of gap. Okay, some dimensionals are not forgiving. Hopefully I've got that straight. I'm going to lay the next one. Just a little gap in between it. Once you get your first one down, it's easier to lay the others. Because now you're just going to take your next one. My light is really blaring, or glaring on for you guys. I apologize. And I want to give it about the same amount of gap as I did here. Lay it into place. Oh, I forgot to uh, do my line embossing, but we can still do that. Even with this on there. And all you do to do that bring in our stampin trimmer 
and I just wanted something to kind of break up the large space. So I lined up, I'm going to move my cutting blade down to make sure I don't cut. I lined up my first one with the edge here. You can do any width you'd like. So I lined it up there. I think we'll go about an inch and a quarter down. So we're going to pull it down. You'll see the little point. It's going to take you to an inch and a quarter. Pick it up. I'm going to move it about an eighth of an inch. And now I'm going to do one inch just to give it a stagger. Move it another eighth of an inch. And then move it to about three quarters of an inch. On your trimmer, there's your ruler there. So it just adds a, you can see it a little better there, just adds a little something to it. So we're going to do the other corner, the opposite corner. We're going to do one and a quarter inch. Move it an eighth. I should have moved it a little bit more that time. Now we're going to go one inch. Move it another eighth. And then we'll do three quarters of an inch. You could always add some bling or something in these corners if you wanted to. Then we're going to take our little leaf. Get the little stragglers off there. And I'm a big fan of popping everything up. So we're going to add some dimensionals to this. It's one dimensional per leaf seems to work. And then for this little tiny stem so that it's stable, I just take my side of my dimensional sheet and see this little thin one? We're just going to trim right there. And that's going to give us a little thin piece of dimensional, which I'm going to need tweezers to grab. And then we're just going to put it right here on the stem. When you're cutting dimensionals in half, you might have a pop-up. You might need a inter intervention. I cut mini dimensionals in half how much I pop things up. Okay. Kind of just so I have a better view, I grab the tip of my objects with my tweezers and obviously stick it to my finger. We're just going to try to set him here at an angle. And there you go. And then I took, for my card base, another piece of very vanilla. I cut it to flip upward. So it's still the same. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And then took my, these I also buy in bulk. These are the, uh, uh, adhesive uh, dimensional strips. I just lost the name of it. It just escaped my mind. Foam adhesive strips. There you go. And I usually run the full length right on the edge. It gives it a, kind of a closed feeling or closed effect. Trim it off. Your little scraps, just put them right in here. There's going to give your center some. They don't stick to your finger. They're going to give the center of your card. Okay, one more strip. I add it along the edge.
and you probably don't need to do from you know the full strip if you don't want to I do it because I just I'm afraid the card will collapse in the mail or something so it just gives it a little more stability I'm going to add a little bit of strip there I have a little tiny piece of scrap on the edge here and we have a runner And put a couple little strips here in the middle so that it has a little more, doesn't collapse. I'm trying to get better at as I pull off my backing to my dimensionals to actually put them in the trash because I end up, you see over here, I end up with all these little pieces and eventually those little tiny pieces get carried out of the room by the dogs on their fur and I end up with little dimensionals everywhere, dimensional pieces. Oops, missed one. I usually just kind of tap to make sure I've got all the backings off. And then we're just going to line it up on here. Ooh, I almost put it upside down. That would have been a good video, Fupa. So then I usually, when I'm putting these on, is I square up the very top, tilt it, square up the top and the edges. And if you have these three spots even, the rest should fall right down into place. On your card and push it down and there you go look how simple that card was and then of course I uh, did the inside with our greeting and I did this also in copper and boss and there you go that is all we have today and these are the other leaves. I'm excited to use these. These are from Rooted in Nature. And they came out really well. So I gotta figure out. See, I make things and then I gotta figure out what I'm gonna make a layout. This one came out really pretty. And it's because Rooted in Nature, which is basically Stampin' Up's new uh, tree set. We call it Lovely as a Tree on steroids. Lovely as as a tree has been out with Stampin' Up! since the dawn of time. It's one of their oldest sets. It's still there. They haven't got rid of it. But they've got the new Rooted in Nature that comes with the dies. Um, the stamp set itself, let me grab it here, is a double set. Comes with the uh, tree trunk and the leaves that go with the different dies. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful scent. And the trees, I call it a, one of their distinctive stamps. It has so many dimensions just within the one stamped image. And the leaves are very intricate. And, of course, this lovely pine tree. So this is one to get. The one we use today is in the new holiday catalog. And it's called Falling for Leaves. It's got some wonderful sentiments for even just thank you. It doesn't have to be Thanksgiving or fall. I mean, it, it makes a great thank you card. And it comes with its coordinating stamp set. And it's got some double, uh, what do they call those? Two-step, where you can actually you know, put into the different leaves. Well, I hope you liked the video today. I will attach the several different ways. There's five different ways I know of to do foiling with different foils or with gilding foil. So I will attach this with a PDF to this blog post and make sure you go ahead and do the blog hop. 
There's some great giveaways and some very, very talented stampers that have done some wonderful fall-themed cards for you. So make sure you follow and go leave a comment. Be entered to win a free prize. Thank you for stopping by today, and I hope you have a fabulous stampin' day.